His Excellency, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Albania, Mr. Eddie Brown. During his more than decade in office, Prime Minister Rama has exhibited exemplary le leadership in promoting unity among the nations of the Balkans and enhancing relations with Europe and the United States. He has also dedicated great energy to efforts to secure and nurture multi-faith bonds and minority communities in his country and fostering intercommunal harmony. Albania has a well-earned reputation for religious tolerance and it famously served as a safe haven for Jews during the Holocaust. Albanians and Jewish people share a long history. That we are actively working to rediscover this history, to promote, ensuring that might be shared with the young generation. The chapter that fills us with the deepest pride is how Albanians behave during the Second War. When faced with the horrors of the Holocaust, Prime Minister Rama, in Albania, you have not allowed Jews to be marginalized few, but have honored them as an integral part of your country's rich uh, tapestry. Your support for establishing the Jewish Museum in Vlore stands as a testament to this uh, commitment, preserving a heritage that resonates far beyond Albanians' borders. One of the most uh, beautiful aspects of Albania is its leading value. Uh, Besa. It means faithful or trustworthy, a principle that embodies the essence of what it means to be human. During the darkest hours of the Holocaust, while many turned their backs to the Jewish neighbors, the people of Albania opened their doors. They risked everything to protect those who were prosecuted, guided by this sacred code of honor. I ask everyone here to join me in recognizing not just the Prime Minister, but the guardian of humanity's highest values. May your example inspire us all to rise to act and to build a future where every life is cherished and every community is celebrated. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in standing ovation for a true leader and a true friend of Israel and of Jewish people, Prime Minister Edi Rama. Well, thank you. It is a tremendous honor to stand here in front of you, leaders and activists of the international Jewish community, among whom I see cherished friends of mine and of my country. For those who have uh, never been to Tirana, there is an underground bunker at the city center. It was built to withstand an attack from NATO. Today it has been transformed into a space dedicated to the victims of those who originally constructed it. The bunker is nearly reminiscent of a modest, small-scale Yad Vashem. Inside the staircase beneath photographs of the thousands of Albanians murdered by our North Korean-style regime in the middle of Europe. Neon letters spell out Primo Levi's words. Those who forget their past are condemned to relieve it. I bring it here not to make any impossible parallelism between the horrendous large-scale extermination of millions of Jews by the Nazi regime and the tragic deaths our communist regime inflicted to thousands of innocent people who were declared enemies of the people. But simply to say to all of you that we Albanians know both the unparalleled pain of the grave wounds of history and the unparalleled need to never forget their causes. 
We are both small nations in size and numbers, but immense in spirit. By the way, I was very happy to know that the Jewish population in Israel has reached 10 million. Because I believe that every newborn Jew is a bless, not only for Israel, but, of, but for the world, whose debt towards Jews can never become a clean sheet. But going back to the immensity of our nation's spirit, I must quote here my late great friend Shimon Peres, who once said the spirit cannot be burned in the ovens. Yes, it always prevails. And let me tell you my firm belief that both our spirits may be tested in small or big ways, time and again, by the controversies of our actual and future history. But at the end, they will always prevail. And our small nations will come out stronger after every test. There is a profound history that binds our people together. Certainly the most well-known chapter is the Holocaust, when Albania became the only European country not to hand over a single Jew, and the only one where the post-war Jewish population grew 20 folds in size. While fleeing out from other countries to escape death, Jews were flying into Albania to protect their lives under the still strong promise of our Besa, the sacred word of honor that is given to another person or family and which is protected by the giver with his life itself. But our shared legacy extends over centuries, and throughout those centuries, the size of our land has never limited nor the vastness of our dreams and either the length of our opened arms towards the Jews. Dear friends, in writing this speech, which I felt both as a special privilege and as a big burden of responsibility, I've tried to be loyal to a Jewish tradition, to begin with the downside, and then to conclude on an upbeat note of hope and confidence. But before I address the complex questions you have bestowed, let me take a moment to appreciate the sukkah you have built around me tonight. It feels incredibly special to receive this tribute, and I'm not sure at all I can take it as me, myself, but I'm 100% sure that I can take it as a tribute to the Albanian people and Albania, which was good at the Jews since the beginning of times. The Talmud says what comes from the heart goes to the heart. That's the warmth and kinship I feel so deeply today into this beautiful little representation of the great Jewish community. Toda Rabbah to all of you. Falimin Derit, I bow myself in gratitude. I know, of course, that unspoken protocols require a leader when receiving a gift or a tribute to downplay it and dedicate the honor to its people. But trust me, it is not that at all when I say that without the Albanian people, our gold heritage and our religious hospitality, none of this would have been possible. Nevertheless, I am not a traditional leader, or at least I hope to not have become one. So I must add in full sincerity that yes, I'm genuinely delighted, also in the personal level, to receive this tribute. 
As a true believer in the idea that being a leader should not be an impediment to speak your mind, I believe that Elie Wiesel was right when he said there are no coincidences in the history of the Jewish people. My presence here and the long age relationship between our countries are certainly not coincidences. Now, to say it all modestly, modesty is not my main strength, but I promise that this is all you will hear about me tonight. From here on, let me speak about us hoping that, as Lord Rabbi Jonathan Sachs put it, when we move from the politics of me to the politics of us, we discover those life-transforming counter-intuitive truths. The truths that a nation is strong when it cares for the weak, that it becomes rich when it cares for the poor, and that it becomes invulnerable when it cares about the vulnerable are absolutely fundamental. But I would like to uncover here as well the power of a nation when it cares about its friendships. Besides the tribute, what makes me proud tonight is that the warmth of friendship I've healed here among you is fantastic and undoubtedly reciprocated. It was certainly the case last week when President Isaac Herzog became the first Israeli president in history to visit Albania and get a taste of our hospitality. Too late for such a historical breakthrough, but right in time when one thinks about the historical context and of the struggle the Jewish nation and Jewish state is going through nowadays, fighting not only for his right to defend itself from a new vicious form of Nazism, but also for the world we live in to not fail and not fall for easy answers in front of an existential threat to the free and democratic space we have constructed all together after the nightmare of World War II. I like to underline a detail that will make the second half of my speech much easier. Among other, Mr. Herzog laid a wreath at the Holocaust Memorial in Tirana, together with our religious leaders. Yet the real news was not that they met. It was that no one in Albania even wrote about this meeting. In a country where the heads of the Sunni Muslim majority, Bektashi, a Sufi Shia moderate order, Christian Orthodox and Catholic communities regularly meet and celebrate each other religious festivities, the President of Israel is simply as normal as not newsworthy. This unity among our religious leaders and religious communities is not a publicity stunt. It is embedded in our DNA. It reflects a religious understanding and well-being that is so special in this turbulent and confused world, a blessing we cherish. Albania has always been like this, and it explains also why we have been so able to enact policies of peace, dialogue, and tolerance towards our neighbors, and also the minorities within our territory who never ever suffered any type of ethnic or religious discrimination. Albania was the first country in Europe in 1932 when anti-Semitism was on the rise that recognized the right of the Jewish community to legalize Shabbat in the law. During the Holocaust, when Nazi leader Hermann Nochbayer summoned the religious and political leaders in Berlin in 1943 to demand a list of Jews and the excess on the gold 
in the Bank of Rome. Our representatives replied, you can have the gold, but not the Jews. And several sessions of negotiations did not change their mind. The gold is yours to take, the Jews are ours to protect. And these are all written in the minutes of the negotiations. And we continue to be the same. I was told this written story of a young Jewish scholar named Theo Kanter, who visited recently the Museum of Solomon in the ancient UNESCO's protected city of Berat. And he left a note. Here I was, a kippah wearing Greek Polish Jew from New York, in a centuries old Byzantine church, in Europe's most Muslim, Islam's most secular, and perhaps the world's most tolerant country. And I felt safer walking there than back home. A post communist rebirth with a Jewish twist. I've evoked history many times today, but what has driven my work in office and landed me here is exactly the exclusion of history from all the politics and policies of my government. When in 2014 I became the first Albanian Prime Minister to visit Belgrade, after 68 years, I was called all sorts of names, with traitor being among the nicest words, believe me. Albanians can be quite colorful when they want to curse you. My mom has passed away, but she will remember very well. Yet I will never waver in my conviction that for Albanians to grow and prosper as a proud nation and for Albania to stand still as a role model small state, it is of essence to look and learn from the past with the eyes of the future and never let the future to be imagined with the eyes of the past. Dear friends, I'm fully aware of the elephant in this room. It is not easy to have this meeting against the backdrop of the tremendous pain and suffering. The mass murder attack of October the 7th has brought to the people of Israel, but also the tremendous pain and suffering the war in Gaza is bringing to far too many Palestinian innocents. I know it would be much easier to skip the elephant than to try and sort out from such a backdrop a truthful opinion that gives to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and gives to God what belongs to God without hurting anyone's feelings. But let me start by quoting Rabbi Sachs once more. Terror fails and will always fail because it arouses in us a profound instinct for life. And while we, the world, can be divided about the how to get out from this devastating war without witnessing daily the screams of pain of the innocent people of Gaza, it is simply a madness with potential devastating consequences for all of us to not be united in firmly defining terror as a very common enemy. Asking for proportionate answer to terror is asking not only for something unrealistic, but for coexisting with terror. By recognizing terrorists as legitimate counterparts to be appeased and not as common enemies to be defeated. There is a history in the holy books. A lioness once took her little cup on a walk for instruction on the facts of leonine life. Said the mother, we lions are kings of the animal world and can overpower any other creature even human beings are not secure, but they are at our mercy. You have never need to fear anyone. 
As they walk, they pass the monument showing Samson tearing up a lion. But mother, said the shocked cub, didn't you just tell me that we can overwhelm even humans and need never be afraid? Yes, she replied. The monument proves it. Were this to occur commonly, they would not put up a monument. Terrorists do have their monuments. 9-11, October the 7th, but they should never have their victories over our common humanity. Yes, one can find plenty of reasons to criticize Israel in its war in Gaza, but no one who cherishes freedom and democracy should forget that Hamas represents the worst of the anti-democratic faces of this world. So what many who call Gaza an open-air prison have to be told is that the guardian of the prisoners within the prison is Hamas, is not Israel. Having Hamas been elected power, which instead of seeking the destruction of Israel with the support of Iran, would seek the freedom and prosperity of its people through a democratic rule, I would be the first to say that Israel is wrong and should be stopped and treated like an aggressor against a peace-seeking neighbor. But although I suffer like every human being witnessing what is happening in Gaza, I am unable to give my benefit of doubt to Hamas, which is the daily torture of its people since so many years in power and in which fight I frankly don't find anything more noble than in the fight of ISIS or of Nazis against the humanity. Unfortunately, no one has yet invented a method of overpowering violence in self-defense without force. And again, we are of course very aware that what is happening in the territories where the people of Israel and the people of Palestine live is something that must end as soon as possible. Albania has voted more than once in the United Nations for immediate ceasefire. But in the meantime, we have never doubted that the ceasefire that does not include the release of all hostages is anything but a boost for Hamas. We have also stood since long time and we firmly stand for the two-state solution as the only path forward towards a long-standing peace. But for us, this means Hamas out of the picture and reliable political representation backed by all Arab states on the Palestinian side. On the other hand, I'm quite aware that all what we can say is still much easier said than done, because by no doubt, to fight and win against terror in the front line is much more difficult and complicated than to lecture the fighters from far away while the innocent hostages in the hands of butchers are not your own people, but the people of a country which was taught by history in the hardest way that when the life of a single person is taken away by the enemy just because of his, her nationality, the life of the whole nation is in peril. In this common struggle against terror, against anti-Semitism, radicalism, and all the evils of the world we live on, Albania stands firmly by the side of all of them that are not ready to forget the grave lessons of history and either to relieve a past that cost it to the humanity the most horrendous pains. Our grandfathers taught us the value of standing with the Jews by putting their lives in line to protect them from the butchers of World War II. And they also taught the world that there was only honor 
in being Muslims and sheltering the Jews in their homes, in being Christians and doing the very same, in being just humans when other humans in danger need your help, and whatever it takes. In the same spirit, we give shelter to several thousand of Iranian refugees whose life was in daily danger in the Camp Liberty in Iraq, where they were raided and killed by Tehran assassins. Bigger and stronger European countries didn't want to help them. And we paid a dear price for being their hosts because the Tehran totalitarian regime engaged in a large-scale cyber attack on Albania, which aimed to wipe out all our digital infrastructure of public services. But we didn't waver and will not waver in our commitment to shelter those people in our country for as long as it takes. And our hospitality was and is not at all related to any political stance against Iran, but only to a humanitarian belief engraved in our spirit as nation. We were forced to respond to the Iranian regime ruthless attack by severing our diplomatic relations and kicking their embassy personnel out of the country. But I repeat, the Iranians in Albania are in our Bessa, as the Jews were during World War II. And Tehran has to put its mind in rest, because by no chance will not deliver any of them to the hands of the regime, but either encourage our guests to engage in any type of political action using Albania like a platform. Lately, we had to open the doors to another group of people, several thousands of Afghans whose life was in immediate danger right after the fall of Kabul. It was truly an embarrassing moment to see how the biggest and the richest among the NATO European members shied away from the most naturally human obligation to rescue them after we left. They believed in the dream we sold them with plenty of beautiful words, freedom, democracy, women's rights, free media, and so on. And they exposed themselves wholeheartedly by working with us for a democratic Afghanistan as free citizens and also working for us as drivers, cleaners, translators, technicians, but suddenly we changed our mind and let their enemies take over and our beautiful promises meant nothing anymore in the dark, terrifying loneliness of our friends. Well, it is not for Albania to say if we had to stay or leave. We are too small for the big decisions of our alliance, but our spirit is too big to not see at this Afghan's despair, our own despair, when we were under the rule of our red Taliban. So in cooperation with several humanitarian organizations in the United States and with the help of the State Department, we welcomed them, sheltered them, and gave them the chance to start a new life instead of being butchered or forgotten till death in the hellish prisons of the Taliban. And we are very proud to see that they are breathing freely here in US, in Canada, and in Albania too. My friends, Albania stands today in the world stage with pride after having passed from a dark past of a very ruthless dictatorship to a long journey of democratic transition during which we suffered a lot the prejudices of the outside world and the stigma of poor criminals. Our country's transformation from a thoroughly harsh but much needed justice reform and the blossoming of tourism to our level of security and our roles in the Security Council at the OSCE Chairmanship and the UN Human Rights Council speaks for itself. We have found our voice in the region, a voice that great powers listen and trust. But my concern is to ensure that this new position for Albania becomes irreversible. We want stronger friendships, 
with all our natural friends. Our strategic allies are the United States and the European Union, which is the bless of our region that otherwise could forget about democratic state building and prosperity. We have strategic partnerships with Italy, Turkey, and Greece. These are our neighbors. You can imagine, it's not easy. But they are our friends. We want stronger and stronger ties with Israel. We want stronger partnerships with the Arab world and have strengthened a lot. Our partnerships with the United Arab Emirates, which is a very inspiring place with a visionary, peace-seeking, progressive leader that comes one in a lifetime. And as well with Saudi Arabia, whose reform drive and seek for progress under another visionary leader have brought us much closer than before. We do not want conflicts or nationalist grants in the region. We aim to promote not just by words, but by our example only peace, regional cooperation, and always, always, always dialogue instead of muscle shows. A lesson my grandmother taught me rings always true to me when I think about foreign policy. Happy neighbor, happy home. I believe that if we remember that God is on our side and also on the other side, we stand a chance of realizing that under heaven's eye, we are all on the same side, the side of humanity. Writing that human greatness does not lie in wealth or power, but in character and goodness, and that all of us are born with a basic goodness, did not save Anna Frank. But as Simon Wiesenthal underlines, for evil to flourish, it only requires good men to do nothing. Rosh Hashanah, the G Jewish New Year, a time for reflection, renewal, and new beginnings, it's approaching fast. It is a reminder that even in the face of hardship and turmoil, there is always an opportunity to start anew. Rosh Hashanah teaches us that the past does not define our future. Instead, it urges us to embrace the promise of what lies ahead with hope and determination. Just as the shofar's call awakens the spirit within us, let this moment awaken our resolve to build a world where peace, tolerance, and understanding are not mere aspiration, but realities we actively create. And part of it is standing always firm against anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and all forms that evil uses to confuse the world. Once more, thank you. And by the way, thank you for being the highlight of this otherwise grim trip to the UN General Assembly. Before we conclude, I'd like to invite Robert Singer back to the stage to present the award, uh, the CAM Global Leadership Award to Prime Minister Rama. Prime Minister, you know, first of all, I had a written speech to, to say it now, but after uh, listening uh, to you, I think really, as you said, it comes from heart to heart, and I can't think about a better person to receive this award following uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and the Secretary General of the OAS, uh, uh, Armando, uh, and, uh, and uh, many, uh, many, many others. I think, you know, when uh, we met a few months ago with your outstanding ambassador here in New York, and we were thinking about this uh, event, we were thinking about 50, 60 people. We had uh, over 150 people uh, willing to come and to listen. And I think that every minute of uh, your address was uh, very meaningful comes directly to our heart and uh, very highly appreciated. So on behalf of the uh, Combat Antisemitism Movement, I would like to take this opportunity to present you with this award. And uh, we know that we have a true and real friend in uh, not only in the Balkans region, but on the worldwide stage. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will, uh, I promise I'll put it in a very special spot in my office where I have few menorahs around me 
and uh, together with the menorahs, I'll take it at home when I leave the office. I don't know when, but I promise that, and then I have to decide if this will stay in my home or in my art studio, but this will stay for me and with us and with our kids and the kids of our kids for generations as a badge of honor. Thank you very much.